Well, howdy, friends. Brian Fleshig, a matter of route fitters of the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools, and welcome back to another one of our fly fishing tutorials. As always, friends, we appreciate you being here. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. That really helps us. Hit that like button. That just makes us feel good. And stay close. We've always got a lot of great fly fishing content coming your way. And most of all, thanks for the support of Matter of Route Fitters. We really appreciate it. And that's what allows us to continue making these videos. So get on over to matteroveroutfitters.com and uh, share some love there. And we, again, we appreciate it. So today we're gonna talk about sinking tips and sinking fly lines. You know, really one of the most misunderstood fly lines of all time, and we'll talk about that in a second. But I, I can tell you back when I started in this business, which was, believe it or not, in the 1980s, boy, we almost never sold sinking fly lines. It was like people were afraid of them. They didn't understand what they would f were for. They thought they were hard to cast. And uh, I tell you, boy, have times changed. Uh, these days, we probably sell almost as many sinking and sinking tip fly lines as we do floating. And that's partly due to our good friend Kelly Gallup and the book. The book that kind of changed everything for a lot of us modern streamers for trophy trout. And recently, we were out in Montana and spent some time with Kelly. And we had a little discussion about the increase in popularity over the years of sinking and sinking tip fly lines. I've, I've said this to our viewers so many times. I mean, uh, modern streamers for trophy trout changed everything. In fact, I just read a book, um, Josh Greenberg, Rivers, mm -hmm. Rivers sure, of yeah. Sand. Yeah, yeah. Excellent, excellent book. But he refers, he refers to modern streamers for trophy trout at several times in that book as the book. There was the movie, mm -hmm. and then there was the book that changed our industry forever. I mean, Modern Streamers for Trophy Trout and then what you've done since then with all the patterns, you created an industry. You created an entire segment of the industry that has really allowed me and my company to, <laughs> to make a living. I mean, there were times when, I mean, back when I first started, streamers were woolly buggers and mm -hmm. Mickey fins and, and, yeah, uh, this big. and now we have a whole side of the fly bin that's dedicated to, to your flies and articulated flies. And not only that, but the, the sinking lines. Uh, we kind of talked about this uh, in, a, in a separate video, but back when I was growing up and uh, first starting in the industry, we would sell four sinking lines a year. Yeah. And now it's, it's right. we sell a lot. Sure thousands and thousands and thousands of sinking lines sink tip lines and it has just created an entire industry and it's changed the way we fish for sure yeah yeah it's brought a lot of youth into this game a lot of younger anglers and not just that but it was you know a lot of it was just something a little bit more exciting for you know kind of like we were talking earlier about watching these bobbers and get a little boring you know, it's a lot like dry fly fishing if there's not a hatch. Yeah. You know, back when we were kids, or when I was a kid, in the 70s, when you would, you just did that. That's what you did. You know, it's hatch matching was coming on, and it's great if you've got a hatch, but that can get really old if you don't. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like watching the bobber if it's not going down. But, yeah, it did, and it brought a lot of, you know, everybody asked me about my contribution. I said, I don't you know. I don't really think about it, that stuff, but the thing that I do think about is guys your age and even younger, you know, a lot younger, it, they're, they're excited about it. It's fun for them. It's just, it's, it's really, that's the cool thing about it. And like I said, it's helped our business and that's, it's pretty neat. As stated before, friends, <clears throat> there are just tons and tons of misconceptions about sinking tips and sinking fly lines. We hear them every day. Uh, it, it's almost like people are scared of them and they, and they don't understand uh, the use and how we use these lines these days and, and, and how they're so important. And I think the number one misconception about sinking lines is that they're just 
to get flies deep in the water, either in a lake or very deep in a stream or fishing off a reef in the ocean. And they certainly can be for that, but that is really not the case and not how we're mostly using them, especially in streams these days. Um, one very, very important thing that you need to remember, and this blows a lot of people's minds when they hear this, but remember that a sinking tip or a sinking line stops sinking the moment that you begin to retrieve it. So you can literally, and we do, uh, which you'll see in this video and several others that we've done, uh, that we'll fish sinking head fly lines or even full sinking fly lines in a foot or two of water. And as long as you begin your retrieve quickly, all that's going to do is keep that fly riding at a certain level in the water column. And that leads me to the two most important things that I learned from Kelly and his book, Modern Streamers for Trophy Trout, is first and foremost, when a bait fish flees, okay, let's say you have a predator, you've got a big brown trout or even for us around here, smallmouth bass, uh, even a muskie for that matter, and we're talking about in a stream. But when a bait fish uh, encounters a predator, and let's just say that they make eye contact, and the predator says, ooh, dinner, and the bait fish says, oh crap, I could be dinner. What direction is that bait fish going to flee? I'll give you a second. He's going to flee using the path of least resistance, and that's going to be straight downstream. And not to mention, he's going to go in a perfectly straight line. He's not going to do this when he's trying to escape, okay? The bait fish that tried to swim upstream like this is a dead bait fish. So what sinking lines can really help us with on the water in particular, is helping to get that proper angle and getting the, the streamer to swim almost in a straight downstream motion and in a straight line, whether that's six or eight inches below the surface, whether that's three or four foot below the surface. You can allow that sinking line to kind of sink to that level and then begin your retrieve. Not to mention the current of the water is going to grab that sinking portion and that's going to allow you to pull that fly straight downstream. So let's go over to the whiteboard and take a quick look at that uh, versus fishing with a floating fly line and then we'll take you to the water and show it to you in application. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Uh, let's draw a cross section of the water here. This will be the surface of the water and this will be your stream bottom. And if you are fishing a floating fly line, okay, obviously that fly line is going to be floating on the surface. Your leader, uh, since you're fishing a heavy fly, it'll be a fairly short leader. And then you've attached a streamer of some sort, okay? And let's say it's an unweighted streamer and you've got some split shot here to help get it down into the water column or a weighted streamer or maybe a weighted streamer and split shot as well. No matter how you slice it, the pull is coming from the surface of the water. And every time you pull that fly, because the pull is coming from the surface of the water, that fly is going to go up and then that fly is going to drop, okay? And then the next time you strip, that fly is going to go up and that fly is going to drop. And not to mention with the current and everything there working against you and that pull is coming from the surface of the water, by the time that fly is uh, slightly downstream of you or as it starts to swing downstream, no matter how heavy that fly, no matter how much split shot you have on there, it's up near the surface at that point. Just no way around it. And the whole time you're making this jigging action, which can catch fish, and especially in lakes, uh, fishing for bass, it can be an effective technique. But if you're trying to catch the largest smallmouth or the largest trout in the run or in the pool, 
you're going to be better off imitating the natural flea response of a bait fish. And using a sinking fly line is going to be the best way to do that. Okay, that sinking fly line is going to be down here. You're going to be fishing an even shorter leader to your streamer. And now every time you pull, that fly is going like this. Okay, you're staying at a constant level, just like that bait fish is going to do. And it also, because of the way that the sinking line interacts with the current and the current will grab that sinking line and try to straighten it out. Now you're going to get, uh, instead of an across and swing downstream presentation, you can actually strip a fly and it's going to come back at, it's going to come back at you in a downstream motion like that, like that natural bait fish. Okay. This also, because of the sinking line, we can also throw it more upstream the current grabs the line and let me draw that here and then we'll go to the water and take a look at that. Okay, so now I'm going to draw, you're going to be looking down on a stream. Okay, this is a bird's eye view looking down at the water. And if you're standing here, you're going to throw that streamer, well, you maybe you'll throw it a little bit upstream. Okay, if it's a weighted fly, or you're fishing in conjunction with split shot. You throw it here, you let it sink until about here, and then when it's, it starts to kind of swing downstream of you, then you're gonna start that jigging retrieve, and each time you pull the fly, you're pulling it up like this, and now that fly is coming across the current, and as it swings downstream of you, you may even be pulling it upstream, which no self-respecting bait fish ever tried to escape against the current okay so with a sinking line now we're going to throw it more upstream okay and this line right here okay because of the current flowing this way this line right here is going to start to belly like this it goes below the surface the current grabs onto that sinking line it starts to kind of straighten it out and now when you begin your retrieve at no matter what level you've allowed that line to pull the fly down to, when you begin your retrieve, it's now staying at a constant level and that bait fish is swimming straight downstream, just like the natural, okay? I hope you can envision that, but if you can't, let's go to the water. Let's go to the water right now and have a look at this. You know, in his original book on streamers, Joe Bates originally taught us to fish weighted streamers, and if they weren't heavy enough to sink to the level where you need them, uh, you're going to add split shot to the tippet, usually fairly close to the fly. And of course you're fishing a floating line, which is fine, and that technique certainly works and most of us start off with a floating fly line. But there's a few drawbacks to that. We're trying to catch the largest fish in the run he's probably going to be the smartest fish in the run. So a couple of the drawbacks are that you're going to cast it across the current and even up the current, okay? And again, no self-respecting bait fish is going to flee across the current or upstream. The other problem is it pulls the fly up and then because you have split shot or it's a weighted fly, it's going to drop. So you have a jigging action, which is again, not really what a bait fish is gonna do if he encounters a big predator. Okay, so casting a line like this in a stream, everything still applies. The first thing you have to do is you've got to get that line on the surface of the water. Then you're gonna do your roll cast pickup. And not to mention, not only the line has to be on the surface of the water, but the fly has to be on the surface of the water. That's critical. Then you're going to do the roll cast pickup. You're going to shoot and go, making sure that you're hauling with this hand to accentuate the cast and tighten up that line. Okay, so line and fly have to be on the surface of the water. 
then we're gonna roll cast pickup. We're gonna shoot once, making sure that we haul, okay? And again, you typically don't want to false cast. You don't need to false cast. There's no reason. If you do this right, you're gonna be able to shoot all of this fly line that you need to, and false casting a sinking line is just asking for trouble. You can get into trouble. So line and fly have got to be on the surface. That's the number one mistake that people make. They try to lift this line out of the water. It's got to be on the surface. Roll cast pickup. Shoot. Okay. And then controlling the line with your opposite hand, controlling the line with your non-casting hand is absolutely critical. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the different types of sinking lines available on the market. Uh, we get a lot of questions about this. So there's a lot of confusion about this. And the first type of line I want to talk about, I really think is the, the most popular. It's the one that Kelly Gallup really has um, perfected. And I think it's the most versatile for both lakes and streams. And that's going to be a sinking head is what we're going to call it. Okay. And by sinking head fly line, what we mean there is the entire weight forward portion. Now the rear end to where you attach your backing, the rear end of that is going to be typically a floating or a combination of floating and some intermediate running line. And then when you get to the taper of the line, the bulk of the taper is sinking. Okay, so this entire, whatever it may be, um, you know, in the case of Kelly's lines, I believe that Kelly's line is, it's a 40 foot sinking head and then uh, total length of 100, so you have 60 foot of running line. 60 foot of running line and 40 foot of sinking head on Kelly's um, Streamer Max Long, which is made by Airflow. And this is by far our best selling line for stripping streamers, especially in larger, faster streams. Uh, uh, we also fish it in lakes a lot. I, I really think it's the most versatile, um, but it's, it's kind of got to be in big water. I mean, for example, when I'm fishing the Mad River here, very rarely am I making a 40-foot cast, and therefore it, it can be a little bit long. But when we go out to visit him on the Madison, or we're floating some of our smallmouth rivers, the Airflow Streamer Max Long is the go-to. And then, of course, in recent years, he has come out with a new shovel head. And the shovel head is a really aggressive kind of reverse tapered line that allows the tip of the line to sink a little bit faster. It can dig a little bit deeper. Um, you can read all about these on our website. And then there's some other companies that have sinking head fly lines. One of the mo more popular ones is the Sink 25 Cold uh, from Scientific Anglers. It's not exactly a full sinking head, but close enough that it falls into this category. So a sinking head fly line is going to be great for the technique that we just looked at for really getting a fly to swim uh, in that downstream motion and staying at the same level in, in the water column. I, I fish these la in lakes a lot as well, fishing for largemouth. Uh, we'll use them to uh, sometimes pike fishing and what have you. Um, the next uh, type of line is going to be a sinking tip fly line. Okay, and a sinking tip fly line is exactly that. The entire head of the line is not sinking. It's just that the very tip or even sometimes the taper of the line. So this part may still be floating. And then you may have a anywhere from, uh, heck, there's some of them that are three foot. There's some of them that are 
five foot, there's 10 foot, there's 17, maybe up to 20 foot. Um, for example, here's the uh, very popular, the Cortland Street Streamer Sink Tip 10. So 10 foot of the front of this line is the sinking portion. Then you've got a floating line, okay? So <clears throat> envision now how that, would, how that would fish. Here's the surface of the water, and you've got 10 foot of a sink tip. So you're still going to get a little bit of that lifting action, but not nearly as much as a floating line. I, I think another misconception that a lot of people have is just because the front 10 foot of this sinks doesn't mean you're necessarily going to be fishing at 10 foot. Your leaders may be only four foot. And if the line, if the line is doing this, heck, you, you can fish it at one foot if you want. Remember, it stops sinking the moment you start retrieving. Um, I, I think sink tips are helpful in very small streams in tight quarters. Let's say, for example, that you're only making 20 foot cast or 25 foot cast. Well, the sinking headline, let's say Kelly's line, when you're stripping in, you're stripping in a sinking line. And especially if you're waiting, that sinking line can sink down at your feet, <clears throat> get caught up on the rocks and such. Um, and it can be kind of a pain to lift out of the water and cast. Whereas with this one, since only 10 foot of the tip sinks, well, maybe now you're stripping in floating line. It's on the surface of the water, much easier to pick it up and shoot and go. So it just depends on how much sinking line you actually need in the water. Uh, when it comes to stream fishing. But I also fish sink tips when I'm fishing, say, early season bass. And I know the bass are up in the shallows, and I'm just going to be fishing two, three, four foot of water. And by the time it gets to four or five foot, I'm pulling the fly out. I'm just fishing the edges, fishing the shallows. Those uh, sink tips, um, some other, here's the Cortland Streamer Tip 15, uh, Rio makes also their streamer series, similar to the Cortland. Uh, Rio makes their predator lines, the sink tips, and, and let me, I don't have all this memorized, but the, the sinking portion of this is about 16 foot. Scientific Anglers makes the Titan sink tip, and this, um, the tip on this guy is uh, right around 10 foot. Uh, maybe a little bit longer, around 12 foot on the Titan sink tips. And then really my favorite, I know that Kelly doesn't like this line, but it's great for us around here on the smaller streams. But And he did not invent this line, but uh, it's really truly one of my favorite fly lines. I use it on the mat around here. I use it smallmouth fish, and I use it in lakes. And it's the Airflow Streamer Max Short. And I believe it is 22 foot of sink tip. So it's 22 foot of the 26 foot head sinks. So it's still theoretically a sink tip, but behaves a lot more like the Streamer Max Long and the Long Stuff. Okay, so the idea behind using a sinking headline in particular, especially like Kelly's Streamer Max Long, or there's several others on the market, is that we're gonna throw this fly upstream as opposed to across stream like you typically do with a floating fly line. And we're gonna throw it upstream. And then all of this sinking line here is being pulled downstream by the current now when I start my retrieve, because the current has grabbed that sinking fly line, it's more or less straightening it out. When I go to retrieve, now that fly is heading straight downstream, okay? This line is not necessarily used to get the fly down. That's really not the case and that's very important to understand, okay? 
by having that sinking line out there instead of a floating line and a long leader that allows me to get this natural straight line retrieve that's the other thing since the line is now pulling from a foot or two foot below the surface that fly is now heading in a straight line as opposed to the jigging action so it's not so much that we're trying to sink a fly especially when we're fishing a stream like this whether it be for trout or for smallmouth it's not necessarily to sink the fly it's so that we can get that downstream escape the fleeing action of a true bait fish so it's not so much to sink the fly it's so that we can get that true action of a fleeing bait fish heading straight downstream the path of least resistance in a straight line as possible very similar to a sinking tip is, is uh, the intermediate sink tips and instead of being maybe the th three to five or five to seven inches per second like your your heavier sink tips the intermediates are intermediate sinking tips and these have become wildly popular in recent years and uh, they can be really versatile especially for fish in shallow water and the and the, the diagram of the line is the same you would have the running line you're going to have the head of the line and then a certain a certain amount of the remainder of the head and maybe part of the taper or maybe even just a part of the taper is going to be intermediate sinking and th these are really wildly versatile lines you can fish them in streams although they're not great at really getting that whole modern streamers for trophy trout or in our case trophy smallmouth of getting the fly to swim downstream but <clears throat> they're very versatile in lakes a lot of people are using intermediate tips for fishing trout flies, coronamids, and such in lakes. Uh, they're great for swinging soft tackles. We use them around here for swinging flies for steelhead. It's just enough to get that tip of the line below the surface, uh, swinging a fly for steelhead. And then here's, here's really what I think is the ultimate use of an intermediate tip. And in fact, um, this right here is one of my favorite smallmouth and largemouth lines, and it's the Cortland Ghost Tip 3. And only three foot of the front taper of this line is intermediate, and it just sinks slightly under the surface. And yes, I fish poppers and sliders for largemouth and smallmouth on this Ghost Tip 3. And I'm telling you, friends, a lot of people think we're crazy when we talk about it, but it makes a popper pop better. It makes a slider slide better. You can fish Dahlberg divers, Umpqua swimming frogs, uh, all kinds of flies. You know, these crankbait style, uh, Blaine chocolate game changers or jerk changers uh, just work very well on uh, these ghost tips or these intermediate tips. And of course, there's a variety of different ones on the market. Um, <clears throat> the, the Scientific Angler's Titan Sink Tip Intermediate. The Rio, they do make their streamer tip in an intermediate tip. So for fishing in really shallow, clear water, uh, probably fishing smaller flies, they can be uh, very, very uh, helpful and uh, great lines and become wildly popular over the years. And then last but not least, we have uh, full sinking fly lines. And full sinking fly lines are where the entire length, both the running line, the running line is sinking, the rear taper, the belly, and then the front taper, all of it sinks. Okay? And these lines are especially, especially helpful for fishing lakes especially if you're fishing from a boat. But if you really need to get a fly down to the bottom of a lake, let's say we literally have flies that resemble plastic worms, and we can get those flies right along the bottom. We use these lines up on Lake Erie, uh, and literally jigging for drum and jigging for smallmouth that are eating crayfish on the bottom. Um, I, I, we do fish them in streams as well, 
uh, they can allow you to get a fly down and keep it down in deeper, faster streams. In fact, we use a lot of full sinking lines for musky around here with those big, heavy flies. It just tends to keep them down a lot better. The, the one thing I will say about sinking, full sinking lines is that they're really going to be best from fishing from a boat. Okay. If you're fishing a full sinking fly line and you're wading in a stream, when you're stripping that line in, of course, you have no choice. You're stripping in sinking line. And as it's at your feet, it can get hung up around your boots. It can get hung up in the rocks. It can get torn up. And then, of course, lifting all of that out of the water, it's probably six or eight foot downstream of you anyway at this point. Lifting it out of the water to shoot that line again is just not overly practical. So if you're waiting, you're much better off with either a sink tip of some sort or a sinking head fly line that has some floating line, at least either in the running line or a part of the head. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is that I, I really think that these lines are best from a boat. <clears throat> Excuse me, if you think of how a lake is structured, a lake is typically going to be like this, right? Your, your shoreline, it's going to be shallower here at the shoreline, okay? And if you're fishing from a boat here, then that sinking line, you can make it do this, and you're going to have a much better chance of keeping that fly at or near the bottom for a longer period of time, even than a sinking head or a sink tip. Whereas if you're standing on the bank and you do that um, and you fish a full sinking fly line, you're going you're gonna to dig into the bottom a little too much. And by the time you get up close to shore, that sinking line is going to be dragging along the bottom, uh, maybe scraping up the line. So <clears throat> I really think that full sinking fly lines for the most part, of course, there's exceptions to every rule, but for the most part, they're going to be best out of a boat no question, so that when you're stripping it in, first and foremost, you can strip it into the boat and not into the water where it's sinking. And then just the dynamics of how a full sinking fly line sinks works better when you're out in the water casting into the shore as opposed to the other direction. So one of the primary reasons that a full sinking fly line is not really good for a stream. You know, the full sinking fly line, a lot of people believe that that means that it's going to get it deeper. Well, it's not necessarily going to get it deeper. It, it might keep it deeper for a longer period of time. But one of the problems with a full sinking fly line fishing in a stream, or if you're waiting, is if you're not making very long casts, um, when you strip in, when you strip a fly in, everything you strip in here at your feet is going to be sinking right down into the water. It's going to be at your feet going to get tangled up on your feet or tangled up on rocks and then before you go to pick up and cast again you've got to get all of this line out of the water so it can really be a hassle and it really prevents that rapid fire uh, Kelly Gallup style streamer fishing that we're so used to if you want to just pick up roll cast shoot okay you got to deal with this line getting tangled up and it's also a lot more prone to get wrapped around your rod. So uh, really best. Oh, I thought I had a fish on there. It was my fly. So essentially, full sinking fly lines are really going to be best fished from a boat. Another common question that we get is about sink rates. And with certain fly lines, there's just no choice. I mean, for example, um, a ghost tip from Cortland, has, a ghost tip three is a certain sink rate. Uh, a streamer tip 10 from uh, Rio, it has a certain sink rate, no, not a lot of choices. But let's take, for example, the scientific anglers Titan sink tip, certainly one of the more popular uh, sinking tip lines on the market. And of course you have the intermediate version 
okay and intermediate version probably sync somewhere around one to three inches per second. Yes, it says so right there on the box. Um, and of course, you can always check our website or give us a call. The intermediate tip sinks at 1.25 inches per second. But then you have the choice of the sync tip three. Okay, and this is, let's say you're buying this for a seven weight fly rod. You can get the seven weight in the intermediate tip. You can get it in the sink tip three or the sink tip six. And the sink tip three sinks 2.5 to 3.5 inches per second. Whereas again, same line weight, the sink tip six is five and a half to six and a half inches per second. So there's different sink rates in certain cases uh, on certain lines. And it, you know, it really boils down to, uh, people are always asking us, what, what, well, what sink rate do you like the best? Well, there's no way I can answer that. I need to know what water you're fishing, how deep do you need to get, and how quickly do you need to get that fly there? Are you fishing weighted flies versus unweighted flies? Uh, we'll have a ton of questions for you to get the right sink, sink rate, but if I had to give some advice on this, um, let's go back to, let's remember that a sinking line stops sinking the moment you begin retrieving it. So therefore, I always err on the heavier sink rate. Okay, I'm always going to buy, if I have a choice between a sink 3 or a, or a sink 5 or a sink 6, I'm always going to choose the fastest sink rate because I believe it gives me the most versatility. No question, if I want to fish it just below the surface, I just retrieve uh, faster, and, you know, sooner, uh, faster, and more aggressively, and I can keep the fly more towards the surface. But then if I need to get it down a little bit, I'll let it sink a little bit and or retrieve a little bit slower. Um, so I always err on the faster sink rate, but again, uh, you know, we'll have some questions for you so as to determine what the best sink rate for you is, if there's an option. So uh, some of the other questions we get is uh, what lines to use in lakes versus streams, or even for that matter, in the ocean. And again, I think it really depends on uh, what level in the water column are you looking to fish. And it depends on whether you're fishing from a boat or from the shore. And if you're fishing mostly just in the shallows of a lake, like I said early in the spring for bass when they're up in the shallows feeding, a sink tip five or a sink tip 10 foot is probably gonna be enough. If you're fishing from a boat and you're trying to, uh, like we do up on Lake Erie and we're dragging crawfish along the bottom, a full sinking fly line is for sure gonna be uh, the line that you wanna have. I think the most versatile, once again, we go back to this, the most versatile is the sinking head fly line like Kelly's Streamer Max Long. That can really be fished from the bank without much trouble. It can be fished from a boat um, and you can fish it at a, a variety of different uh, levels in the water column. Okay, so th they each have their place, um, but it just depends on, on really on what you're doing. One of the primary reasons why I use sink tips um, uh, for reasons uh, over and above what we've already told you is that I like to fish unweighted flies. Um, I love how the sinking line casts them. And then the action on an unweighted fly is going to be much different than a weighted fly. Uh, again, imagine a weighted fly is always going to have at least a little bit of this jigging action. And, and again, that can be a good thing in certain situations. Uh, but <clears throat> most of the flies I, I like to fish, as you know, my favorite fly of all time is called the Swimming Jimmy or as Kelly mistakenly calls it, the Swimmy Jimmy. Yes. Swimming Jimmy or Swimmy Jimmy, I think you call it. Swimmy Jimmy. No, it's wrong, it's a Swimmy okay. Jimmy. Okay, Swimming. Uh, have, swimming you, Jimmy. have you heard about the uh, Jim and Swimmy? No. <laughs> it's 
uh, in our world, it's the swimming jimmy. You can call it whatever you want, but it's one of the world's greatest fishing flies. And this fly has to be fished on a sinking fly line. It can be a sink tip or a, uh, a sinking head or a full sink for that matter. But this fly is absolutely useless on a floating fly line. It does nothing. It, it lays there. Okay, even if you put a little split shot out in front of it, it doesn't do much. So <clears throat> my favorite fly has to be fished in conjunction with a sink tip or a sinking head fly line. My second favorite fly is called the belly bumper. And this is, uh, I, I think you've seen Kelly and I. Kelly tied this for us one night when we were out in Montana last summer. And the belly bumper is one of my favorite flies for trout, for smallmouth, for largemouth. And heck, I've even been using this for redfish down in New Orleans. And it is also critical. Sink tip. Um, how about the Murditch minnow? This is a cult classic smallmouth and largemouth fly. Again, critical um, that you've got to fish this on a sink tip. And of course, I still find myself coming back to the one that started it all, the Zoo Cougar, uh, one of the world's greatest um, unweighted fishing flies. But you can still fish weighted flies uh, on a sinking tip fly line or a sinking fly line. And one of the things, uh, the sink tip not only helps to get it down and all the things we, we've showed you, but a sinking line actually makes casting weighted flies easier. And yes, that's right, friends. Casting a sinking line makes throwing weighted flies easier. Um, for example, the legendary Sex Dungeon, uh, one of the top selling streamers of all time. Um, I do, by the way, know the story of how this fly was named. We'll save that for uh, another video on a different channel. Uh, how about the Boogeyman? Uh, that's one of the most overlooked sinking flies of all time. A fantastic smallmouth fly, by the way. And the Peanut Envy, I think, one of the most versatile streamers of all time. Uh, modeled after Russ Madden's Circus Peanut, which is also a great fly, but Kelly Gallup's Peanut Envy. In fact, if you've seen any of our Montana videos from summer of 2021, uh, we were fishing uh, the Peanut Envy. Um, and it's kind of a medium weight fly. It's not overly weighted, just with a cone head. Uh, but these are all fantastic on sink tips and sinking lines. But um, I prefer, if I can, I prefer to fish unweighted flies. The action on them is superior in my mind. And uh, just some of my favorite flies are these unweighted streamers, such as the four I've shown you here. You know, one of the single most important parts of fishing sink tips, and this is the part that so many people don't understand, is that we typically, and I'm not gonna say always, but we typically fish very short leaders. And we're talking in the ballpark of four to five foot on average. Sometimes on, a, on an intermediate tip, like the ghost tips, I might go out to six foot, but very rarely. Of course, it depends on the fly that you're throwing. If you're fishing small trout flies in a lake, you might be six, seven, eight foot, something like that. But for the most part, m almost all of your sinking line, and it doesn't matter whether it's a full sink, sinking head, or sinking tip, four to five foot. And you're gonna be way better off to build these yourself because it's so easy, okay? And the formula for building one of these leaders is super simple. You're gonna match the butt section of that leader, you're gonna match it to the tip of your fly line, okay? And you want a bell curve similar to this, and I'm showing you here, where the, where the butt section may be a little bit stiffer than the tip of your line, okay? That's okay for it to be a little bit stiffer as Flip Palette taught us. You see that the bell curve here is is a little less of a curve than what the fly line gives me, okay? And this leader formula is just could not be easier. You're gonna match the stiffness of the butt section to the tip of your fly line, okay? And that's it, it, that just is what it is. So for example, I typically use Maxima Ultra Green, 
okay? You can also use the, another one that we have found that works great for sink tips is the Cortland uh, monofilament leader material. And we'll talk about this in a second. But let's say that I'm fishing, uh, I'm fishing an eight weight, okay? I'm gonna use Maxima Ultra Green for my butt section. And I'm gonna make that butt section two foot. And just because I do this for a living and I fish sink tips these days, probably 70 to 80% of the time that I fish in fresh water, I can tell you that with Maxima Ultra Green, my butt section is 22 thousandths. It is what it is, okay? Now that may vary when it comes to certain types of fly lines. For example, the Titan tapers from scientific anglers are a little bit more aggressive. They're overweighted. Same with the Predators, an outbound short. You may have to go up to 24 thousandths, but you can easily do this bell curve before you tie the knot and you can get an idea. Okay, but in general, on most of the sink tips that I fish, an eight weight, my butt section is going to be 22 thousandths. And then I know what my tippet is going to be because that's determined by the fly. And my tippet is almost always going to be typically no less than 12 thousandths. It might even be 13. And for really big and heavy flies, it might even be 15 thousandths. But let's say I'm throwing a swimming jimmy on my eight weight. I throw a swimming jimmy on my eight weight. I can easily throw a swimming jimmy on 12 thousandths. It's fairly light. If I went up to say a, a, a um, boogeyman, which is heavily weighted, it's got wool on, on the head, it's gonna, it's gonna soak up a lot of weight. I may go to 13 thousandths on that. But regardless, the next section, this middle section, to make my four foot leader, you're just gonna split the difference. Okay, if my tippet is 12 thousandths, I'm probably going 17 thousandths on that midsection. You could go 15 thousandths. You know, you could do that as well. It's not gonna, it's not gonna hurt anything. The most important thing is that you've got to get the butt section of that leader. The stiffness of the butt section has to match up with the tip of your fly line, or you're never gonna be able to cast and effectively fish a sinking fly line. And then of course, if your tip it's not right, the whole thing's gonna collapse. You've got to get the diameter of that tip it right in order to throw the fly. And again, that's almost always 12, 13, or 15. I'll tell you a quick little story. I arrived in the Amazon one time. This has been about 12 years ago. Got to the Amazon, fishing for peacock bass. We got out on a bonus half day of fishing when we got there. I went out, we of course fishing sinking lines down there like we normally do. I came back to camp that night. I probably caught 25 peacock bass that afternoon. And one of my clients had not caught a fish and he was not happy with me. And he said, boy, I didn't catch a fish. And if that's the way the week's going to go, I'm not happy. And everybody else is catching fish. And I said, well, we'll call him John. I said, John, let's go have a talk and let's look at your gear. And he, had, he bought the line from us here at Matter of Outfitters. And, and I'm sure I schooled him on this. But what had he done? He had looped on a store-bought nine-foot leader. Why even fish a sink tip fly line? Especially in that case scenario, okay? If, if, if your sinking tip fly line is, is down here in the water column and you've got a nine foot leader, first and foremost, you don't ever want to have loops on sinking lines. Of course, you all know how we feel about loops, but the first thing I do is cut the loop off this line and I snell the proper butt section on there. But if you're fishing a nine foot leader, your fly's probably riding up here, okay? The fish are down here. That's why you're using that sink tip, okay? Your leader should be no more than four or five foot in any form of fishing. It's kind of a, a, a rule that you always keep your weight source as close to the bait as possible. And using a sink tip fly line, your weight source is the line itself. Okay, he was fishing 
six foot, eight foot above the fish's heads. They never saw his fly. I had a four foot leader on there. I was putting the fly in the fish's face, catching fish. It, it makes a world of difference, it's one of, and it's one of the most important things to understand about fishing sink tips and sinking fly lines. So casting sinking lines. Uh, you know, uh, one of the great misconceptions is that they're harder, they're hard to cast, they're challenging. No, I can't. Well, you've heard that for years, and it's just, it's just not true, friends. Casting sinking lines is easier than casting a floating line, and as I told you before, it makes casting heavy, heavy flies even easier. So don't believe what you hear and read, okay? In fact, we've done a video uh, recently to kind of go along with this one. You can probably link to it right here. And if by chance you can't see that link I'm pointing to, it's right down there linked in the description. So hop down there and watch our video on casting uh, sinking lines. Um, so it's, it's just... It's just absolutely not true. It's an old, old, old stigma that sinking lines have here in this industry. Um, and I'm telling you, you do this right, you'll launch these streamers into the next county. So which line is right for you? Well, I certainly hope this has helped understand sinking lines and sink tip lines a little bit. But the truth of the matter is, um, I can't tell you which line is right for you. Okay. In fact, most of us who fish this style of fishing, when I go on a trip, I might have three, four, five, six different lines. Heck, we were uh, a year ago, we went musky fishing with uh, the legendary Blaine Chocolate, and Blaine probably had 10 different, 12 different fly lines on the boat with us, and we'd get to a run that was a certain depth and speed, and he would calculate in his head what the best line was for that scenario. So, there's not necessarily one fly line that will suit all conditions. I think you're gonna wind up with some omni spools and a few different lines spooled up for different scenarios. But um, if you only have one line in your future, you can certainly pick up the phone, send us an email. We'll be happy to help and we can find a happy medium. We can find a best case scenario for you. Uh, if you wanna get a couple of lines, we can certainly help with that. But uh, determining what line is best for you, for you, certainly pick up the phone, call a great fly shop like Matt of Routefitters, for example, and we'll be happy to help you determine what sinking, sink tip, or full sink fly line is best for you and your scenario. So friends, I really hope this has helped. I'm sorry to talk so much, but uh, like I said, the misconceptions about sinking lines are just overwhelming, and uh, we've really set out to clear up some of that mystery that surrounds these fantastic lines, which like I said, I'm probably 70% sinking or intermediate tip, even when fishing on the surface these days. So as always friends, stay tuned, be sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and don't go anywhere. We've got a lot more coming at you. If you like this video, hit subscribe. It helps out a lot. And check out these videos. We think you might like them too.